Assalamualaikum and hi guys. So today we will proceed with chapter number six, the last chapter, which is I can highlight and I will highlight. Okay, so for this chapter we will cover for three weeks, right? Okay. So for the first one is the outline. So as usual, you have introductions, nomenclature, methods of preparations, reactions of I can highlight, right? Uh, you have nucleophilic substitutions, which is SN1 and SN2. Next, you have elimination reactions, E1 and E2 reactions. And then the two last reactions, which is reductions of alkyl halide and hydrolysis of green reagents, we already covered in chapter number two. And the last part is the uses of alkyl halide, right? So for the introductions, so, alkyl halide are organic compounds at the point molecule containing any halogen atom. It doesn't matter whether it is a chlorine, bromine, or even iodine. Okay, it doesn't matter. Okay, so alkyl halide are classified as primary, secondary, or tertiary, as usual. For example, you have um, this one, okay, Cl, and then you have the structure and the third one you have okay, this kind of structure so how you want to differentiate with whether it is a primary secondary or tertiary I can highlight okay the first one you look at at the uh, carbon attached to your highlight group okay so this is your highlight group okay so you have to classify the carbon Okay, this is your highlight group, so you have to classify this carbon and this one, so this carbon. Okay, so and then, uh, nak classify tu mudah je. Okay, you tengok dekat carbon yang ini. Okay, carbon, this carbon attached to only one carbon. So, this one is a primary carbon. Okay, carbon yang tengah ni, dia attached dengan satu carbon, dua carbon. Okay, dua carbon. So, ini adalah secondary. And yang terakhir, carbon yang di tengah ini, attach dengan satu carbon, dua carbon dan tiga carbon. So, this carbon, it is a tertiary carbon. So, whatever types of carbon attached to your CL, so it determines the type of alkyl halide. So, meaning that this one is a primary Rx, this one is a secondary Rx, and this one is a tertiary Rx. Rx meaning that, means that alkyl halide. Okay, alkyl adalah R group, X adalah halide. So, Rx. So, kalau methyl halide bermaksud CH3 attached dengan Cl. So, ini kita panggil dia methyl halide. Bukan primary halide, bukan. Kenapa? Sebab your C do not attach to any carbon. So, bila dia tak attach dengan any carbon, so dia bukan primary. Kalau primary, carbon ni mesti attach dengan C, ada attach dengan another carbon, at least one carbon. So, baru you boleh identify this one sebagai primary Carbon. So, yang ini tak ada carbon attachment. So, kita panggil dia methyl halide. Okay. So, meaning that untuk akhir halide, you ada empat classifications. The first one is methyl halide. Okay, saya tulis um, X line, methyl halide. Second one, you ada primary, primary Rx. The third one, you have secondary Rx. And the fourth one you have tertiary alkyl halide. So this is the type of alkyl halide yang you ada. Okay, so this one um, another examples. Okay, awak boleh check lah. Contoh yang ini carbon pada BR ni attach pada satu carbon, dua carbon. So that's why jadi secondary bromide and so on. So this one chloride kenapa tertiary? Sebab carbon yang ini attach dengan satu, dua tiga carbon. So, directly bonded. So, that's where they did tertiary uh, chloride. So, this one you boleh tengok juga lah for the allylic V 
vinyl allylic and benzylic right so for the nomenclature uh, I dah tak cover so it depends sebab before this pun you pernah um, belajar alkene uh, with CL attachment so kita akan nama dia ikut IUPAC naming so you have to identify the longest continuous chain for the first um, rows okay LCC the longest continuous carbon chain number 2 you kena buat numbering ikutlah apa yang perlu kalau you ada double bond, so you kena utamakan you punya double bond. Kalau you ada triple bond dalam structure awak, so utamakan triple bond. Kalau ada double and triple, refer balik pada opening structure yang sebelum ni ataupun chapter sebelum ni. And then, macam biasa, you kena locate and name your branch. Number 4, you kena ikut alphabeticals order. So basically, the process uh, for you to name your organic compound is depends on the type of um, functional group if you have double bond so you have to prioritize your double bond make sure your double bond at the lowest carbon number if you have benzene and then you have to decide which one is your parents which one is your substituents and so on right okay so and then for the common names okay for example for the structure usually if you if we are using IUPAC naming so, you have to identify your longest carbon chain pada yang ini. Okay. So, kalau ikut kaya ini, longest awak adalah 1, 2. So, dia akan jadi etane. So, etane apa? Uh, first carbon ni ada F kan? So, dia akan jadi loro etane. Okay. That one is for IUPAC naming. Because IUPAC naming, kita selalu uh, menggunakan longest continuous carbon but then for the common name dia akan jadi ethyl fluoride ok, kalau common name dalam akil halide you punya akil halide akan jadi you punya parent chain so contoh macam ni, akil halide awak akan jadi parents, so parents awak akan jadi bromide, so the structure is an isopropyl so dia akan jadi isopropyl bromide, but uh, don't worry ok, so Always name your compound according to IUPAC naming unless stated. Alright, so remember, always using your IUPAC name. Okay, so next we move to the methods of preparation of akil halide. Okay, okay so for the first uh, methods of preparation, it is the halogenation of alkene which we already covered in chapter number. Two. So since your starting material is alkene, uh, absence of any unsaturated bonding such as double bond or triple bonds. So if you want to prepare an alkyl halide, so you will need your alkyl halide and UV as your reagents. Okay, so you can refer to your previous video in chapter number 2. Okay. So this one is for hydrohalogenation of alkene. So meaning that your starting material is alkene. K plus with HX. Kenapa HX? Because hydrohalogenation. Hydro mean hydrogens. Halogenation means alkyl. Sorry, uh, halide group. So meaning that kita akan gunakan H dan X. So this one depends Somehow you perlu menggunakan Markovnikov rules. Somehow you tak perlu gunakan Markovnikov rules. Okay. So I give you some examples. Okay. So for example, okay, I give you cyclo uh, pentin. Okay, pentin, sorry. So for this one, if you want to add with HBr, and I give you another examples. Okay. Cyclopentene but with one um, methyl group. So this one is methyl cyclopentene. This one is cyclopentene only. Okay, both are will be added with HBr. Okay, so for this one, okay, the first one, okay, uh, when you want to um, predict the product of additions, the first thing first, you have to locate your double bond. So your double bond is located here. And then you have to calculate the bonding 1, 2, 3. So meaning that you have one 
hydrogen left. Always remember carbon must have four bonding. So yang bawah ni awak boleh tengok satu, dua, tiga. So kat sini pak ada satu hydrogen. So bilangan hydrogen awak adalah sama. So ini kita panggil symmetrical reagents. Sorry, symmetrical starting materials. For this one HBr, bila you nak pisahkan H dengan Br, okay, you cut the bonding, so you will have H and Br. So, dia adalah dua benda yang un identical, tak sama. So, kita panggil dia sebagai unsymmetrical reagents. So, Markovnikov rules only apply bila you ada unsymmetrical dengan unsymmetrical. So, this one is starting materials. This one is your reagents. So, since yang ini satu adalah symmetrical, satu adalah unsymmetrical, so, you don't have to apply Markovnikov rules. So, apa yang you perlu buat adalah di sini adalah you punya locations of double bond. So, hilangkan double bond, gantikan dengan dua sigma bond yang baru. So, you nak tambah dengan apa? Tambahkan dengan you punya reagent. Satu you letak H, satu lagi you letak Br. So, this one is no Markovnikov rule. Okay. So, the next one. Okay, kita ulang balik step yang sama. Mula-mula you kena kira uh, pada carbon yang ini ada berapa hydrogen. So, kira dulu bonding. Satu, dua, tiga, empat. So, carbon dah cukup empat bonding, meaning dah tak ada hydrogen. Okay, kira yang bawah. Satu, dua, tiga. So, yang ini ada satu hydrogen sebab tiga bonding sahaja. So, satu tak ada, satu ada. So, dia tak sama. So, dia adalah I. Symmetrical. So, HBr pun adalah unsymmetrical. So, meaning that you can apply Markovnikov rules. So, Markovnikov rule macam mana? Proses tetap sama. Okay. Dekat sini ada metal group. Jangan hilangkan. So, dekat sini ada awak punya double bond. So, double bond hilang. Tambah dua. Met, uh, sub, uh, sorry, dua new bonding. Okay. So, apa yang nak tambah dekat situ adalah you kena tambahkan H dan Br. So, sebabkan you kena apply Markovnikov rule, so kena ingat Markovnikov rule orientations adalah OH higher priority than X, higher priority than H. So, sekarang you nak tambah H dengan BR, H duduknya di sini, BR duduknya dalam golongan X. So, meaning that X kena attach pada yang kurang H. So, X akan duduk dekat sini, BR akan duduk di bawah. Kalau no Markovnikov rule macam atas ni, Kalau you nak lukis, structure awak macam ni pun betul. Okay. So, contohnya kalau you nak letak BR di atas ataupun H di bawah, dia adalah benda yang sama. Tapi kalau you kena apply Markovnikov rule, kalau you tu buat terbalik, itu adalah minor products dia. Alright. So, next one is hydrohalogenation juga tapi menggunakan anti-Markovnikov rule. So, Saya bagi awak struktur yang sama. Bila mana awak nak guna Markovnikov rule? Bila you ada conditions dalam bentuk peroxide. Sama ada dia guna simbol ROOR, peroxide ataupun dia guna H2O2. So, kalau you nampak jadi semain and then dia mesti HBR. Kalau HCl ke, HI ke, HF ke, tak applicable. Okay. So, kalau dia HBR ada ROOR, so you kena guna anti Markovnikov jika perlu. So, jika perlu macam mana? Bila dua-dua ni adalah US dan US. Kenapa US? Saya dah tunjuk dekat atas ni eh. Alright. So, bila anti Markovnikov dia terbalik dengan Markovnikov rule. So, saya suggest awak untuk ingat Markovnikov rule saja. So, bila perlu apply anti Markovnikov, so terbalikkan saja. Proses tetap sama. Okay. This is structure asal. So, double bond ada putus so bentuk balik dua sigma bond yang baru so apa yang nak letak dekat situ kalau anti Markovnikov dia punya orientation ni terbalik kira jadi macam tu pula so maksudnya H kena duduk kat tempat yang kurang hydrogen BR kena duduk kat tempat yang lebih banyak hydrogen so this one only untuk anti Markovnikov so anti Markovnikov ingat pesan saya awak punya ni hanya Untuk HBr sahaja, anti Markovnikov. Kalau you ada Cl, tak applicable. You ada F pun tak applicable. I pun tak applicable. Okay, that's all untuk preparations and introductions. Thank you.